You're so uh, Thessaloniki. In adulthood, okay. David Barzilay uncovered a haunting truth about his past while reflecting on his roots in Thessaloniki, Greece. He had always known he was Jewish, and he had survived World War II. Basic type family, Basel family, 1930s. But he had been lied to about who his father was, until one day. I was always still questioning, early, a few years earlier I was still questioning, if you're my father, how did you survive and not my mother? A friend of the family revealed the truth. She said, okay, so here's the real deal, here's the reality. Your father is not your father, but he's your uncle. Namely, the brother of your mother. It's like, just that. Everything just settled, settled down in my mind. This revelation led David to visit this nondescript parking lot, imbued with profound significance. Here, he confronted the very ground where his parents faced the horrors of World War II. Thessaloniki was once a bustling cultural crossroads, adorned with the richness of diverse faiths, a beacon of the Byzantine Empire's glory. It now bears the scars of time. Its remnants lie in ruins, obscured by construction and pockmarked by graffiti. Its various communities, mere ghosts. Hi, I'm Jeff. And I'm Sujatha. We knew you as late to travel. I was traveling all over the world, but then came the pandemic. I was traveling too, but I had a stroke in 2016. And now together we're going to travel the world. We discovered romance and adventure. Once upon a time, this port city was a vibrant tapestry of cultures, stories intertwined. Known as Salonika to the Jews and Salonique to the Muslims, many peoples mingled freely. Greek Orthodox adherents also found their home, but Jews and Muslims composed the largest demographics of the city. Thessaloniki became the crown jewel of the Ottoman Empire. Among its inhabitants were the Romaniots, Greek-speaking Jews who lived in the Eastern Roman Empire. But it was in 1492, after the expulsion of Jews from Spain, that a new chapter unfolded. The Ottoman Empire, eager for prosperity, welcomed these Sephardic Jewish merchants with open arms. Here, they forged a unique identity, melding Spanish and Ladino, Hebrew and Greek, and flourishing as merchants in the heart of the Mediterranean. Among them were David's ancestors. His Sephardic Greek family was in the import-export trade and had a store in Thessaloniki. But all that changed quickly. Kampfront Mittelmeer. Auf einem Flughafen in der Nähe von Saloniki. Marshal Rommel trifft ein. I was born essentially uh, at the apex, if you like, of uh, the war, okay. the Second World War, 1943, when the Germans came into Salonika. But things went very quickly. I was born March 3rd. Germans came in uh, end of uh, February. Within two, three weeks, they rounded everybody. That's how swift they were. I remember my uncle telling me that uh, one of the first things they did when they entered the city, they rounded all the males. My uncle remembers my father being, in fact, they stood next to each other. And depending on, you know, where they put you, either you straight to the trains or labor camp. That's why my uncle, my younger uncle anyway, managed to survive. They put him in a labor camp and then they fled. But with respect to my parents, like 
barely a breath, and they were gone. And my, and my grandfather, grandmother, and had uh, an uncle, and a cousin. Anyway, I've counted 22 people of my family that, you know, perished. David was born on March 3rd, 1943. His birth parents, Mathilde and Yaakov, were deported to Auschwitz on April 17th, 1943. He was just a one month old. More than 80% of the community of over 50,000 were killed in the Holocaust. Now, only a few hundred remain. The Mondany Market stands as a sober testimony to a lost heritage. Designed by a Jewish architect from an influential merchant family, it stands where a synagogue once stood. The remnants of the stylish Jewish villas lay in disrepair, boarded up, covered in graffiti. Only the Casa Bianca, now a municipal art gallery, offers a glimpse into a bygone era of finery and opulence. This is a Villa Bianca, which is a former um, mansion of a Jewish family. Eleftheria Square, where David's parents were rounded up and deported, now stands as a parking lot with a solemn memorial. But Thessaloniki's ghosts are not confined to the Jewish community alone. Once adorned with minarets and mosques, the city bore witness to the Ottoman Muslim presence. Many Muslims lived here, including Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, the president who modernized Turkey. His birth house now hosts a museum. In 1912, Thessaloniki joined Greece, triggering a dramatic demographic shift. Ottomans left. Then, the 1923 Treaty of Lausanne prompted a massive population exchange between Greece and Turkey. Over two million people swapped places, flooding Thessaloniki with Greek refugees from Turkey. This influx drained housing resources, leading to a housing crisis. In response, the municipal government ordered the removal of the city's minarets. This was a decisive break from its Ottoman past, a shift towards Greek cultural dominance. Today, only remnants remain the Alataz Imaret and the Yeni Mosque and this Ottoman market. So right behind me is the Hamsa Bey Mosque and this is the kind of the uh, remnants of the Ottoman Empire um, when it ruled this part of, uh, of Greece. Hammams or Turkish baths also dot the landscape. The Great Fire of 1917 ravaged much of the city, destroying countless monuments and erasing traces of the shared path. Following the fire, French architect Ernest Hébert conceived of a grand European-style vision for Thessaloniki's reconstruction. The Aristotelist Plata, envisioned as a majestic boulevard, aimed to showcase a blend of Byzantine and European artistic influences, deliberately steering away from the Ottoman design. These ambitious plans, however, were never fully realized due to the lack of funding. As tensions with Turkey grew and Hellenism was revived, Thessaloniki's pluralistic history faded into obscurity. However, even iconic Greek monuments reflect the convergence of many faiths. This, as I said in Greek, is the Sophia Church in the heart of Thessaloniki, Greece. This part of the world is tantamount in what I call religious syncretism. Syncretism means the molding, the coming together of two or three traditions. So we see this in this very, this very church, where if we take a look at the picture, we have the, uh, the icon. The icons are very much part of the Byzantine experience. They go into contemporary Greek orthodoxy. Right above the icon, we have it looks to me to be the Ner Tamid in Hebrew, the eternal flame, which also hints at synagogues. As Jeff lights a candle in honor of his late Greek wife, he contemplates the afterlife. In Thessaloniki, ideas about the afterlife were developed, impacting not only Greek Orthodoxy, but wider Christianity and Islam and Judaism as well. But it's kind of ironic because right there, there's a lot of graffiti and traffic and everything. And right there is uh, a Byzantine Tina. It's all together. Greeks were also involved in hiding and saving Jewish Greeks. 
This modest Orthodox Church was instrumental in saving David's life. It operated this orphanage. Its records showed a mystery child that it could not account for, a boy named Dario Maserano, among four circumcised babies. In Montreal, David was grappling about questions about his origins. In Thessaloniki, a trio of researchers embarked in a determined quest to locate Dario, the Jewish orphan boy. Through a winding journey, the researchers ultimately uncovered the truth. Dario Maserano and David Barzillay were one and the same. His grandfather, Nathan Barzillay, had entrusted a Greek lawyer with the care of his grandson. I was with this Greek family, uh, Theodorakis was the name, and uh, they, at some point they realized they could not take care of me because they, they were, they feared for their lives also. And they said, you know, we just can't, you know, it's too dangerous, you know. So they, uh, the story goes that they brought me to the police station and they said, listen, we, we found this baby, you know, uh, the do on our doorstep and we don't know what to do with him, you know, and can you take care of the situation? And so they did and they knew there was an orphanage in Thessaloniki and they took me to that orphanage. It was there that the baby boy underwent baptism and was raised within the Greek Orthodox faith. So, jumping ahead, you know, to two, two years, this was 1943 I'm talking about. Uh, in 45, when the war ended, my younger uncle knew where to go get me, okay? And so he retrieved me from that orphanage. The uncle decided to alter the baby's name, changing it from his father's surname, Basarano, to his mother's thus adopting the name Barzillay. He chose to keep this troubling family secret buried for decades, never speaking of it again. Uh, he was, and supposedly he was afraid to divulge to me, you know, the true, the reality, because for fear that I would reject him after, you know, which turned out to be the exact opposite. I actually became closer to him, you know, because of that, you know. David's life took a tumultuous path, shuttling between his two uncles in various boarding schools. Marked by uncertainty and displacement, his journey spanned continents and cultures, from Israel, then under British Mandate Palestine, to Venezuela, then to small town Ontario, to London, to Paris, before finally settling in Montreal. Being a retired teacher with a doctorate in physics, his extensive travels were more a result of exile than choice, often leaving him with a sense of uprootedness. Despite this, he finds grounding in his family and community. When asked about his identity, his response was firm. Definitely Jewish. What I can say in terms of the Jewishness aspect is that my wife has a lot to do with what I am today in terms of my Jewishness. But when I met her, she was much more entrenched, entrenched socially, if you like, you know, and, the, and maintaining Jewish traditions. You know, uh, we gotta celebrate Pesach, you know, Yom Kippur, Hanukkah, you know, and all these other festivals, you know. In the backdrop of Thessaloniki's storied past and resilient present, David's story serves as a poignant reminder of the ensuring power of identity and belonging. Monuments may stand in rubble, but with memory and courage, identity can remain. Come travel with us. Please subscribe to our channel, Fierce Travel. So do it.